from observation, I would say, in my opinion, you are the most consistent person I have met when it comes to the social media engagements. And I understand that sometimes the feedbacks are not encouraging. So, but how do you stay the course when these likes and the following don't come as you expect? Because whether you like it or not, no matter how much you grow to believe that we are making the impact, whether they like it or they don't comment, there's always that small voice that tells you, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> if you are if you are doing well now these people they should be liking you know so how do you stay the course when you have those feelings well very simple you do it for a cause and not for applause right the likes the comments the shares those are applauses Applause, okay. right so for me it's doing it for the cause because i want to see people upgrade i want to see people become better at whatever it is that they are doing so that's why i show up so i show up to challenge you to say okay you can do more you can do better you can you, you don't need to rest on what you're currently doing as that's it for you no there can be more that's why one of the card phrases that we use that there is always more on the upgrade side exactly. of life there's always more for everybody right but if you only do what you do because of likes and shares and comments you probably will be frustrated and you that's probably it. will give it up that's it. because many times like i said earlier the people who benefit the most from what you do yeah. will not like. ever many times come to you and say, okay, this thing is, has been good for me. This thing has been beneficial for me. This has been a solution for me. They won't say that. I don't know why, but they won't say <laughs> it. Right? But if you use that as a yardstick for what you do, probably you will not be doing it anymore. Right? So what you're doing now, you're doing interviews, you're doing your, your content for YouTube, you're doing your radio show. Some people may not even say, oh, you are doing well, God yeah, bless you, and all yeah. of that. Some people will not even pray for you, Seth, right? But they are learning from what you're doing. They are taking notes. They are practicing. They are seeing results. Yeah. Right? But it's okay. It's okay. So one of the things I've, I've used to always keep myself is the fact that someone down the line, five years, ten years from now, will listen to this and because of this be inspired. So because yeah. of that person, I have to do it today. To do it. So I'll give you an example. I started um, doing podcasts recently. You know, one of my mentors, Bishop Feber, always told me, do podcasts, do podcasts, do podcasts. I was like, I am not ready for podcasts. The one I'm doing, is, <laughs> that's just I am. Once I say I'm not ready, I'm not ready. But once I start, it's not going back. So I started podcasts <clears throat> last year. The first one I started with was um, Get Sense Podcast. So... I did that 20 episodes, then I left it. Then I started the other one, which is uh, Let's Talk with Emmanuel. Now, on Let's Talk with Emmanuel, as of today, we have 63 episodes and we have over 113,000 listening in less than four months or five months since we started, right? Now, the beauty of that one is this most of the episodes I release, some are amazing, some are not too amazing, but I put it out nonetheless. Yeah. There's one that really caught my attention was going through a lot. The episode on going through a lot. I think I that was think episode 60. That right? it was, it was I put out going through a lot on Sunday because I made up my mind now to just put out an episode every Sunday. So I put out an episode on Sunday. By Monday evening, my friend was in the office with me. We were just seeing it go from 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. It was just going. And what I told myself was, what if I never recorded this episode and put it out? All these listeners will not have heard what they are listening to right now, right? And then I put out the next one after that, the truth about trans agenda, and we are still struggling listen, less I than listen, 500. I listen, I listen to <laughs> right? And like Vuzi will always say, there are some podcasts that people really just connect to. Yes. There are some podcasts that people just enjoy listening to. But there are some podcasts that literally change people's perspective. And you must create all three. All three, yeah. Right, some, regardless some, some of challenge them, they yes, may not come back best. Regardless it of the listener that you have, that. just keep doing what you're doing, right? Okay. And so, that one has taught me that whether I have 10,000 listening, because I think the highest I have so far is about 33,000 listening on the episode, um, resolution is not the solution. Okay. Right, and I put that one in the beginning of the year. You know, when the year starts, everybody yeah. wants to oh. get ready. So I guess that's why that one was like that, which is amazing. But the thing is, 
if I didn't record those podcasts, it won't be there. And the people who are listening to it so far would not have, have anything to listen to. So because of that, just keep putting out your content. Like scripture says, sow your seed in the morning, in the noon, in the evening. You never yeah. know which one which will one spring up for you. Up. So yeah. just keep putting it out there. Just keep putting your content out there. You just have no idea which one somebody will listen to. And then that opens the door. So for some people now, you may be saying, oh, but I don't have uh, 1,000 followers on Instagram. I don't see people comment and all of that. Don't do it for the comments. Do it for the fact that you have a message to share. You have a value to give. And you're doing it with excellence yeah. just keep doing it awesome yeah but you can't take away the fact that sometimes it's overwhelming to come up with different contents here and there and i see your instagram handle is busy beyond your personal comments so how do you curate beyond your personal contents how do you curate curate contents that keeps your various platform very busy uh, okay, so that's a lot. That's work also, and you must be willing to do the work. So for me, like now, I just put a, a post before I came in here about loss, and then the next post after that was something from Steve Harris. He was talking about the fact that when you move to another country, people tell you that you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, and the truth is you don't have to. You just have to stay focused with what you what know you can do and give it yeah. time and that's what he's doing so for me loss this kind of message makes sense and then another content on loss so for me i deliberately curate the content that i put out there so when i go on um explore or i'm going through instagram and i see something that makes sense i will send it to myself as dm so when it's time for me to post i go through again and say okay the previous thing i just shared and this one I'm about to share, they go together. So my page is not scattered. You just see that they're following each other. It looks like they are planned. Yes, they're actually planned. But it's just in a way that when you come there, it's a school on itself. Before, I used yeah. to do that a lot on WhatsApp. But I realized that. WhatsApp people. Mm, those people. <laughs> those people on WhatsApp. Those people on WhatsApp. I feel that sometimes... You should not give people so much free knowledge. They abuse it, and then they do nothing with it. That's yeah. even the part that hurts the most, that and they do nothing with it. People on WhatsApp do that a lot. Yes, yeah, so for me, since January 1st, I have not shared the status on WhatsApp. I mean, people were like, are you still on WhatsApp? Are you still? I'm there. I'm not sharing anything for WhatsApp, <laughs> people. Sorry. Go to Instagram, go to Twitter, go to LinkedIn. You see what I share, but I'm not sharing on WhatsApp because WhatsApp people don't know how to appreciate value yeah they trivialize it they become familiar with it and then they undermine what it is that you do for them yeah because of that proximity so you just have to just let it be and besides i learned that thing from john you no know, john has been on my contact since i've known john and i've not seen the status from john obedi yeah <laughs> if you have to say anything from john obedi you go to instagram stories and all that i've not seen i've never seen a post on john obedi on whatsapp I'm like, well, he's alive. He's doing well, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not by WhatsApp. It's not by WhatsApp. But people who have amazing um, engagement on WhatsApp, beautiful. I, I have it because there's a time I used to do um, story uh, WhatsApp status for people as promotional materials and all of that. So I used to do it. But for a while now, I just said no because I want to deliberately determine where you can see me, right? So if you really want to see me and have exposure to what I do, there are basic platforms you'll see me. Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Outside of those three platforms, you won't see me anywhere. It's now trying to get into where you are now, do YouTube, and then do go back to Facebook. I'm trying to go back to Facebook okay. by May, when the time I was hacked away for me two years ago. So I have to return after two years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I probably go back to Facebook by May this okay. year. So I'll go back you to Facebook. You practically answered my <laughs> next question already but i was going to ask why are you on some platforms and not on some platforms yeah so you yeah for, for for platforms i feel you should always look at the platform that gives you the most engagement yeah right so for me instagram has been that so sometimes i go on those popular blogs on instagram and i make a comment and i get over four thousand likes on my comment and i'm like oh wow this makes a lot of sense people like this kind of thing so i've seen that i've had that with instagram 
And then with my comeback, the first set of people who made me believe that yes, coming back was good, was from Instagram. So I felt, okay, this is where I will build my tent. Even though I'm not the owner, so I'm building my tent, <laughs> right? But I'll be here for now. And I chose Instagram. Then Twitter. Twitter is an amazing space where the only thing you may not see people tweet about is the rapture. Because some people will miss, would have gone. But outside of that, you see trending. Anything that's happening in this world is on Twitter. Yeah. Right? So if you want to really stay informed with the news, the update, the technology, everything, iPhone 15 coming out, everything is on Twitter. It, it looks like Twitter is recent. Instagram is two days after. Then Facebook is after one week. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is one week time. You start to hear what has trended on Twitter a week ago. Yeah, yeah. It's not trended on Facebook. So I stay with where it's most recent. So I, I stuck with, with, with Instagram, Twitter, then LinkedIn. LinkedIn, this is a professional. So I said, okay, let's be professional. Let's, yeah, be, let's, let's be, be on LinkedIn. Let's stay in the midst of professionals, right? So those three places are places where you always find me. Then WhatsApp is if you are any any of my program and I know you personally, then we can have conversations on WhatsApp because for me I feel WhatsApp is really too close. Yeah, it's right. It's, it's really it's, too close. So we must preserve the sanctity of it, right? Yeah. So it's not everybody that should just have access to you because they can click a link on your bio and see your WhatsApp and then click it and then no, 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 no. You need to guard that space. So for me, yeah. is that we were doing business or have known you before, that's when you're on my WhatsApp. Outside of that, I really don't talk much on WhatsApp because I want to preserve that space because that space is really personal for me because that's where i do most of the work that i do so i want to keep it safe and sane for me oh, right. yeah okay finally as we wrap this up yeah i want to know because doing all of this amazing work with the same 24 hours that the rest of us have as your daily routine like daily <laughs> 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 ah, routine is the same man i gotta wake up in the morning I sorry think... especially Knowing that you still have a nine to five, I'm yes. not, I don't know whether a lot of people know that you uh, do all of this, <laughs> you do all of this, and you still have a nine to five. And I know you for excellence. I'm not sure your job will suffer on the basis of this. So no, you... no, no, my job doesn't. So sure my job gets better because of what I do, right? So yes, for me, my 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 day is like every other person's day. You wake up in the morning. I think I wake up by sometimes by four, and then. I try to start to think what I'm going to write for that day because I have to write every day. So I start to think of what I write. And then we do the usual devotion now that everybody gets to do and pray. And I'm just on my bed till about six. I get up, do a little bit of exercise, take my bath, and head to the office. I think I'm at the office as early as 7, 7.30. I'm already there for people start coming in because I have to record my life first in the office. Okay. So I do that and I'm there. And I do the normal work and the things I do on social media while I'm also at the office. And then many times I leave the office by 9, 10 at night. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I leave the office by 9, 10 most times, literally every day. Even I came from the office to this place this morning. So that's just my routine for me. But I think what has helped me is the fact that I know what it is I set out to do for every day. I may not necessarily have a to-do list per se, but I have a lot that I write. So when you come to my office, you see me a lot of notepad, you'll see me writing. I have a lot that I write because I believe that it's always good to write in as much as you have a sharp mind or you have a notepad on your phone. It's always good to just write because sometimes it helps you just to take stock of what you're doing and how far you've come as against when you just put it on your phone notepad and all of that. So I write. And I just scribbled down things that I want to do for that day and then come back and say, okay, was I able to do this? If I wasn't able to do it, I carry it over to the next day and continue. But one of the things that I'm very, very intentional about are my don't do list, the things I don't want to do, yeah. right? The things I know I should not be doing. Like you said, gossip is having information you cannot do anything with. I try not to get involved with gossip. I try not to talk into politics. I try not to get into those conversations or religion. I try to talk about those things. I just talk truth. All those other things I don't want to get involved because those things can be an unwelcome distraction from whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. And then you're trying to, you can't even defend God. So you're trying to not do that. <laughs> I, I don't want to get into those conversations. So th I think those things help me to know what I need to do for the day. And then I just get into it. Right. Yeah. There are days where I don't tick off all the things that I want to do. 
right? I'm very sincere with people. I tell people that, oh, I didn't do anything today, but I'll come back again the next day and continue from where I stopped. Because I feel like we are not in any race in our lives. Yeah. We are not. Just keep doing what you know you should be doing and you'll be fine. A lot of people are looking at other people and say, oh, okay, I, this yeah. person has done, this person has done this. Oh, so he's doing YouTube now, so let me go and do YouTube. No, no, no. Focus on your focus. Yeah. Do what it is that you know you have been called to do and keep making progress every day. Awesome. At the end of the day, you will see how far you have come. You know, I said something in one of the, the short lives I did yesterday. I said, we should stop measuring our lives by the results we are seeing right now. Because if you look at the results you are seeing right now, you feel like you are failing. Yeah. Right? Measure your life in four years, in five years. So know how far you have come. Then you can look back and say, okay, I really have made so much progress. progress you know, yeah. in 2020, I had a very huge financial loss. Very huge, very massive. And when I mentioned it to my colleague, they were like, are you are still okay? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you are still okay. Like, you lost that kind of amount and you are still okay. You can still come to work. I'm like, it's gone. But you know what? By 2023, I have regained what I lost financially. That's life. What I learned from that whole experience is the fact that if I could make it before, I can make it again. That's it. That's why, that's why we must keep tab on how we make it. Do you understand? So how you, because if you know how, you can always go through the route again. Do you get So that one has really just helped me to know that it's you that is the main thing. It's you as a person that's the main thing. So, and if you can focus on building you, all of these things would come. Like uh, Joshua Selman, Apostle Joshua Selman, will always say that the kind of blessings that you are praying for cannot come to this version of you you yeah right he's actually preaching upgrade so you can't come to this version so you need to upgrade, upgrade. for the version that can attract that's... that one that is coming right and that's what people don't know and that's why people live the kind of lives that they live if you know that you need to get better for you to attract better things to your life focus on getting better those things will come naturally but people are focused more on getting the things and not yeah, them yeah and the challenge with that is if you get those things you would reduce them to the person that you currently are. Uh, yeah. I think, I don't know whether it was you, I heard it from the B, do, have, and do. And it's me, B, H, D. B, have, have and do. do. It's yeah. who you become, you would have, and with what you have, you can do too. So that's why we say we give people B, H, D, not P, H, D. Awesome. Sometimes I'm wondering, I'm wondering, what plans do you have to engage this routine when that sister <laughs> comes in? Because when the, when, the, when the women come in, when the wife comes in, she's going to demand a lot of this time. So what's your plan? Well, you know, I feel like as I grow, a lot of perspective also grow and some of them change. Yeah. Before, I used to feel like, oh, I must marry somebody who's supporting what I'm doing. <clears throat> if I don't marry that kind of person, there will be a problem. But I realized that I don't really necessarily need to do that. Because this is my life. And I will continue to do this. Right? If the person doesn't do the kind of things that I do, it's totally fine. One of the people I have as mirrors is uh, Vusi Tembakwai of South Africa. Yeah. Never seen his wife. I've never seen his kids. I only see Vusi. And I'm okay with Vusi. I'm not interested in the other parts. <laughs> it's us back here in Nigeria that feel like, oh, if I'm a pastor, my wife must be mama. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sagi. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Energy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Just want to thank you for thank, us. thank you so thank very you. much. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you for watching. It's a pleasure having to come on your space. Hey, Shalom. before we wrap up, my, 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 my special sign off for programs is this. You know, they say in life, you should never mix business with pleasure. But the only time you're allowed to mix business with pleasure is at a point like this, when you're done. So you can tell your client, it has been a pleasure doing business, business. with you. Yeah.
So ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure, pleasure doing business with you. Thank you. <laughs>